Hey everybody, so um, because of a system outage, we're not able to hold class right now, um, but I did want you to get the opportunity to hear my voice, uh, talk about some housekeeping with you, and um, take a look at what we would have taken a look at in class uh, if we had been able to meet. Um, because the class is so brief, I do want to keep us on schedule. Uh, but I do want to remind you the two sections we are looking at today, 4.5 and 4.6, they are not due until Saturday morning. I feel really confident that the system outage will be fixed um, probably later today, but definitely before Saturday. Um, and tutoring is a great opportunity. And I should have, I can't queue up the tutor track. Um, website for you, but you can go, once the system comes back up, you can go to tutortrack.forsythetech.edu and you can sign up for tutoring and um, that's a great way to get extra support. We'd love to see like maybe a study group um, break out of the class. So um, I purposely gave you to Saturday so that if tomorrow morning you wanted to go to tutoring, that uh, would work out for you. Uh, also, please reach out to me if you have any questions, particularly once uh, our uh, system's back up and it's easier for us to email with each other. Um, so I, and then also want to remind you next week we have um, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, Monday we're going to talk about systems of equations. That's a topic that usually goes pretty smoothly. And then Tuesday is the um, last day of the semester. We're going to review the test a little bit then you have to take the test on Tuesday, by the end of the day Tuesday, um, so that I can record your grade uh, Wednesday morning, because it's due, I think, Wednesday at noon. All right, uh, section 4.5, I'm going to try to record two videos here, one for section 4.5, one for section 4.6. Uh, 4.5 is really brief. It's only 12 questions long, um, so I wanted to talk about it here with you. I just have three questions queued up. Uh, this first question, uh, the equation y equals log of x plus 4 has a vertical asymptote at. So I wanted to graph this guy for you. And we have talked about, you know what, I think if I do a zoom for, that might be a little bit better picture here. Uh, we have talked about um, how you shift to the left and to the right. And I'm going to compare this with log of x. So you can see here, log of x has a vertical asymptote at uh, 0. By adding 4, we are shifting this to the left. So this will have a vertical asymptote at if I get my pen to work here. Negative 4. All right, next up is problem 7. This one asks for the domain. Um, and I am noticing right here, well, let's graph this guy, and then I want to uh, point out something that I, am, I can observe here. So we have log of 2 plus x. We're going to graph that. Yeah, you see a vertical asymptote here at 1. All right. Let's think about, um, let's try to get a coefficient of 1 right here. I could factor out a 2. So I would have 2 times uh, x plus 1, or 1 plus x, either way. So the 2 is acting as a stretch, and the 1 is acting as a left shift of 1 unit. All right, so I'll make a dotted line right here. At negative one. This guy's going off to the right. So my domain 
starts at negative 1 and then goes to the right off into infinity. Uh, negative 1 is a vertical asymptote. The model approaches negative 1. It never reaches negative 1. So we're going to use parentheses. All right. Um, and then the last question I want to take a look at with you is the one that students typically find uh, most difficult. And that is where you take a graph and you have to uh, work backwards and find the expression that would match this graph. All right, so the first thing I like to do here, I'm going to give you a little bit of a, a process here. So the first thing I like to do is work out the reflection. The second thing I like to do is work out the horizontal asymptote. The third thing I like to do is to take a point and fill out the model. All right. So let's talk about the reflection first. I'm going to clear out the stuff I had in the calculator here. Let's leave log of x in there. So um, I can tell based off of my graph on the left, the given graph, that this guy has reflected over the x-axis. So what would you need to do to reflect over the x-axis? So if we change the sign, see right now I just reflected over the y-axis. And you're going to have questions where you reflect over the y-axis. If I reflect over the y-axis, I change the sign connected to the variable. I change the sign on x. If I change the sign on the log, I reflect over the x-axis, and that's what I want here. So for this model, I'm going to have something that is negative x. So let's write I'm debating where I want to write. Let's write right here. This model is going to take a look like f of x equaling I can have a constant out here log base b of um, this case a negative x let's say plus c for my vertical asymptote. All right, well, what's that vertical asymptote going to be? My vertical as my, I said horizontal right here. I said should, should have said vertical asymptote. I'm still thinking about the last section. My vertical asymptote. All right, so my vertical asymptote for this model is at x equals negative 2. And I think I'm getting out of frame right there. Uh, x equals negative 2. So um, I need to, let's uh, take a look at the calculator here. I need to shift this two units to the left. I just wrote this wrong. Let's fix this. To reflect over the x-axis, I'm going to change the sign of the log. So we're working with a negative a right now. Okay. Next up, I can get the calculator to work. Okay. Um, if I subtract by 2, that takes my model and moves it to the right. That's not what I want. I want to move it to the left, so I will add by 2. Let's clear out this stuff. 
Alright, now this guy is taking the same basic shape as the given graph on the left of my screen. So let's add by 2. Um, I'm just going to erase. Hopefully. Here we go. Plus 2. Okay. Now we need to take the uh, given points and fill out the model. Now, this first point is not helpful. And let me show you why. I want to zoom out a bit to give me some space to work. So I have f of negative 1 equaling negative a log base b of negative 1 plus 2 equals 0. Well, negative 1 plus 2 will be 1. Oops. And then log of 1 is going to be 0. Regardless of the base, log of 1 is always 0. Talked about the identity yesterday. Uh, so this point's not helpful. This doesn't tell me anything about A or B. It's a true statement, but it doesn't tell us anything about A or B. So let's try using the second point, the 2, negative 3. So we're going to plug in 2. I'm going to zoom in a bit on this. 2 plus 2 is 4, so this gives us negative a log base b of 4 equaling negative 3. This is how I would approach this. I'm going to use my change of base formula. We talked about change of base formula yesterday. Negative a ln of 4 divided by ln of b equaling negative 3. And this is the kind of tricky or slick approach that I use here. I'm going to multiply both sides by ln of b. Multiplying both sides by ln of b. That gives me a ln of 4 equaling so negative a ln of 4 equaling negative 3 ln of b. And that's all of the algebra I need to do here because in order for this log to equal this log, b must equal 4. And in order for this coefficient to equal this coefficient, a equals 3. So now I know all of my unknowns. Let's write this guy out. Let's see if I can zoom out and get a good bit of this on the screen at once. So we're going to have negative 3 log base, I'll oh, see, I need to zoom out a little bit more, not there. Well, we'll do that, okay. Negative 3 log base 4 of x plus 2. Um, I'm going to graph that as well, just to check. It's always good to check, particularly on your test. Checking your problems can improve your test grade. I'm using change of base formula when I enter this. I'm going to graph it. All right. I know from my prompt that negative 1 should map to 0, and it does. Good. And that 2 should map to negative 3, and it does. So this problem completely checks out. All right, I'm going to do a separate video on section 4.6. Um, 
I really wish we could have the opportunity to interact in class right now and ask questions, but please reach out to me. Um, I'm going to try to check my email every hour. Please reach out if you have any questions or if there's anything I can help you with.